I don't know if you guys are familiar with the story, if, if you've even heard of it, but it got a ton of news coverage, which is a good thing, okay? Now, this young man is actually, and I call him a young man because I call my daughter a young woman. You know, they're about the same age, between 11 and 12 years old. And this kid was basically a throwaway kid from the country that he's from and where he is now, the family that adopted him and brought him up and gave him something constructive to do, I think speaks volumes about what we're capable of as far as Americans. But I also think that it speaks loud volumes as far as, um, as far as us being parents, too many times we only bring kids into this world as far as what we can benefit from them. You know, we call that babies for benefits, okay? And I, and I feel like in my heart, that if his parents knew what he was doing now and know the uh, the gift that he have, and there was a person that was not his biological parent that found that gift and allowed him to harness that gift into something amazing, I think that they would absolutely try to take him back and try to take credit for what he did, okay? And I think that's very important to say in the story, okay? Now, here's the story. Good evening, guys. We'd like to welcome you to the Soto Podcast. I am DJ Just JOK. I want to bring you guys a positive story about a young man and a craft that I'm not super familiar with, but I thought it was a really dope story. I happened to run across this myself, actually. And if you guys ever want to send me anything, you know you can always email it to me. But this particular story caught my attention for a lot of different reasons, okay? So when you think of 11-year-olds and 11-year-old kid, girls and boys and the hobbies that they like to do, a long list of kid activities will come to mind, okay? So I want you guys to name in the chat, what are some things that you think that 11 and 12 year olds like to do? Me personally, I think of video games. I think of them downloading apps on phones and tablets. Some of them like basketball, football, soccer, you know, playing with their friends, maybe Barbies or, you know what I'm saying? Well. Back in the day, we had G.I. Joes, right? That's That was my thing. I, I might be telling my age a little bit because some of you guys know that G.I. Joes are very old and they come from a very long line of toys. But in this case, you just don't know what will spark a kid. And I got to shout his mother out. And I want to tell you guys about the story of Jonah Larson. This is the young man on my screen. Again, he is 11 years old and his hobby strays from those normal assumptions. Yeah, y'all said uh, video games, sports, bike riding, a lot of things like that. That's right, dancing. Self Savior points out something that a lot of these kids do now, especially like the, the Fortnite dancing and all of that kind of stuff. Back in the day, we had Transformers, right? Yep, very much so. <laughs> so here's the thing. He strays away from what we would think of normally. He's 11 years old, he is from Milwaukee, and he is very passionate about crocheting. But what I wanna do is I wanna tell you how we got to that part. There's a place called Lacrosse, and he is a sixth grader uh, by the name of Jonah Lawson, and he has a unusual hobby. And at least it's unusual for an 11 year old. Matter of fact, I think we just got a new member. Matter of fact, somebody just caught it. I forgot to tell you guys about that. If you guys want to join my channel, we are actually going to have some special perks. One person just took advantage of it in particular. That is Kitten Paws BB, who just discovered my new channel secret, which means you can actually join my channel as a member of the AFC officially. And that's gonna actually give you guys some special benefits. It's a very, very small fee monthly, and it's really, really dope. And we're gonna start going forward doing a lot of things that are specifically geared just towards the members. I almost forgot about this. So thank you very much for taking advantage of that. Okay, he's really into crocheting. I'm not super familiar with crocheting, but I do know that there was a point in time when my mom bought a lot of crochet stuff. I don't know whether it was for us to experiment or whether it was for my sister to experiment. Nonetheless, I did see those little things. I didn't know what they were. I mean, everything to me, like I'm trying to use them as weapons for my GI Joes. <laughs> like everything was like, like I used to play out my little scenes and stuff like that. I would have never have thought to do something like this. Like, cause when you think about crocheting, you might think about maybe something your grandma might do. That's something that women do. You know what I'm saying? But nonetheless, they put him into this thing 
and gave him his first. Oh God, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, mispronounce what it is, but they gave him those little. I don't know what you call those little sticks. I'm about to mess this up. Let me just read the story. He's gotten really good at this, and he can speed crochet without even looking at his hands. And I got to tell you guys, it's amazing to watch him do this on video. Every one of these pictures that you're looking at is something that he created. Okay. Now he got into crocheting when he was about five years old, age five. I remember when my daughter was five years old, I would never think that a five-year-old, any five-year-old kid could not only get into something like that, that I think is, has a little bit of complexity to it, but to get good at it, right? He had been making hats, scarves, mittens, and blankets for his own entertainment and for family members and even neighbors. His mom, by the name of Jennifer, which is this lady right here. Let me go back so you guys can see exactly who I'm talking about. And yes, she does not share his skin hue, but she is his mother. That is the woman that is responsible, not only for finding his gift, but actually bringing him in as an orphan kid. Okay, and I'll talk a little bit more about where he's originally from, but shout out to Jennifer, because what she did is really what all of us should be doing as parents, right? His mom, Jennifer, even started him an Instagram account called Jonah's Hands, J-O-N-A-H, apostrophe S, and then H-A-N-D-S, if you guys want to look him up on Instagram and follow him, to show him some, to show off some of his amazing creations, so she created an Instagram account for him. His mom, Jennifer, said that, as about a month ago, he is up to 2,400 followers. I think he's got a lot more than that. And then his hometown paper, the uh, the La Crosse Tribune, which is the, uh, the hometown newspaper, they actually published an article about him, which was picked up by Inside Edition. Well, Inside Edition is a pretty large media group. He was also uh, picked up by Good Morning America. Some of you people might watch that show and NPR, among others, and he went viral thereafter. Jonah's Instagram account has more than 46,000 followers now, and I think he's a little bit higher than that, and he's known throughout the world. And it's definitely a fun, excuse me, it's definitely a fun story of an unusual hobby that crazily took off, but it's more than that. His mom, Jennifer, said that Jonah's interest in crocheting started like as a fluke when his sister gave her, gave, uh, excuse me, Started as a fluke when her sister gave her a box of craft items when she that she was trying to get rid of, and Jonah noticed the shiny crochet hook. That's that's what it's called, a crochet hook. So to Ladyfoots and anybody else, I got it wrong myself, but it's called a crochet hook. Thank you, Pamela. I caught that. Crochet hook. Jonah noticed the shiny crochet hook and asked what it was used for. And a YouTube tutorial, and an hour later, he made his first dish cloth. That's pretty impressive. The therapeutic effects of crocheting, which some of you guys talked about in the chat, for those who don't know Jonah, it's probably surprising that a five-year-old was able to produce a perfect dish cloth so easily. But Jennifer explained that Jonah has always picked up on math really easily, learned to read, and when he was about three, tested so high on an IQ test that he actually skipped a grade. Wow, how about that? How about that? The hobby is also something that helped him in elementary school where his boredom and distraction would sometimes lead to behavioral problems like a lot of kids go through. And I've always told you guys, I don't believe in putting your hands, feet, and other objects on kids, but I've told you guys, there's always ways to deal with kids and sometimes maybe you have to be creative, right? And this is actually, again, shout out to the mom. She found out what his actual niche was, okay? Now, the hobby is something that helped him through elementary school when he was having behavioral problems. And his fifth grade teacher encouraged him to bring his crocheting into school. And after assignments, he is allowed to crochet, his mom said. It was just wonderful because then there, was, there wasn't any boredom anymore. Plus, Jonah's classmates were fascinated with this hobby. They were not making fun of him because some of you guys might know that kids in school can be a little bit harsh sometimes. They were not critical of him, but they were actually intrigued. So shout out to those kids, right? They loved watching his flying hands as he worked and started to ask, uh, and then they asked him to make projects, right? Jonah does make projects to order sometimes and then sells a few items. 
and those orders have been picked up since he went viral from a few orders here and there to over 3,000 items. That's crazy. He's received just in a few weeks. But she says she's not accepting most of those orders. That's coming from his mom. She's not accepting those orders. So this isn't like a thing she's trying to turn into like some factory or something like that. So shout out to her because I know there are some parents that might try to do that, right? If Jonah sees something he's interested in making, he might do so. But to fulfill all the orders would defeat the purpose of his calming hobby. He has two little hands, she said, laughing, and I don't want to overwhelm him. Plus, he likes to make things on his own terms. So whatever he wants to make, when he wants to make, how he wants to make, then he does it, right? Let me go ahead and give you guys the fair usage because we got a few videos that I want to show you guys if you don't mind. And I think the videos speak a little bit louder than my words. Let me go ahead and show you guys these videos. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Our final story has quite a hook and a chain and a loop. Here's Vladimir Dutier. In a craftsman-style house in a normal Wisconsin town lives an 11-year-old with a grandmother's soul. So, Jonah, crocheting. Yes, that is what I do, and it's, I really enjoy it. Jonah Larson, born in Ethiopia, adopted and raised in La Crosse, is the next big thing in the crochet world. He learned to crochet when he was five from a YouTube tutorial his mother, Jennifer, found. She gave him a hook, some yarn, and left him alone. I thought I was going to have a big ball of yarn, a mess, and he had a dishcloth made, and it was pretty good, too. Here is the hat that I can make in 46 minutes. All right. Here is one of my braided cowls. Here is my favorite, and it is the Sunset Afghan. It started as a diversion to keep his sometimes overly active Look how quick he is. Man, that's crazy. Hey, matter of fact, shout out to Donna Aguayo, who just joined also. So Donna, thank you very much. And let me go ahead and moderate you. Thank you, Donna. And matter of fact, if you guys are not familiar with how to do it, I will actually show you a screenshot here right after this video. Here is one of my braided cowls. Here is my favorite, and it is the Sunset Afghan. It started as a diversion to keep his sometimes overly active mind occupied. He got so fast and so good, he started giving lessons on social media. There's lots of people are asking how to use the loop yarn. I kind of think of it as a natural talent. But his nimble fingers can be flabbergasting to one who's all thumbs. <laughs> this is so hard. And I started my own crocheting business. After the local paper ran a story on Jonah, his videos went viral. His dad, Chris. He's got 3,500 orders that have come in, Chris. And he's never made me a hat. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Apparently, that's uh, Jennifer and the dad that also uh, adopted. So apparently, they're a family, which is good. Person have come in, Chris, and he's never made me a hat. <laughs> so that's both of them. That's Jennifer and uh, what did he say his name was? I didn't catch his name. His videos went viral. His dad, Chris, he's got. So Chris and Jennifer are the dad, mom and dad to him. That's pretty cool. 3,500 orders that have come in, Chris. And he's never made me a hat. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Jonah's happy to be an ambassador. Okay. Introducing his craft to a new generation. Like the kids in his old fifth grade class at State Road Elementary. Get in there. Get in. It's not easy. Blah, blah, blah. But with encouragement <laughs> comes success. His parents work hard to keep life normal for Jonah and his siblings. People do um, forget sometimes that Jonah's a kid, and we need to remind them that he's 11. For now, though, there is nothing more fun for Jonah than this. Yes, to Steve, they did adopt him and raise him right. That is absolutely right. Good observation. Gr great observation. Now that's a good yarn. Vladimir Dutip, CBS News, La Crosse, Wisconsin. Got a few more videos coming up for you guys. Let me take a pause real Please. quick. People do. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot of this real quick so I can Remind show Remind them that uh -oh. he's a lot. Uh-oh, uh-oh, hold on. 
Let me see. I'm going to take a screenshot of this so I can show you guys exactly what it looks like for the people that are asking how do you join the channel. Uh, I'm going to let me make sure it's done. No, I didn't. Let me scroll it down a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Right there. That's actually better right there. Let me see. And boom. All right. So for the people that are asking how you actually join the channel, I'm going to show you a screenshot of that here in just a moment. If you'll give me just a second, I got to do a quick screen capture. And then I have to trim it down a little bit so you can see it on the screen. So bear with me just a moment if you guys do not mind. And this will only take me a second. OK, well, we got a few more videos. Yeah, thank you very much. Chorus 15 like. They've been asking for positive videos. I thought this one was pretty interesting, not only for the way that this boy grew up, where he came from, because he could have literally have been one of those kids that, you know, um, didn't have any guidance. He could have he could have literally have turned to negativity, and I'm glad that that did not actually happen to him in this story. So let me show you guys real quick. Boom, right here on the screen. So I'll show you what it looks like. This is me. <laughs> this is what y'all see on the screen. So let me get my tool out real quick. Whiteboard. And right here. It should, right next to the subscribe, show you right there. That's how you can join the channel. If you click that, it'll show you some options. You could even join for as little as two dollars a month and we're going to start having it to where uh there'll be certain shows where just the members will be able to uh to utilize the uh the live chat and be shown on screen which i think will actually be pretty cool and then everybody else will still be able to listen so nothing will actually be able to change but you can actually this will give you an opportunity to have some exclusive uh participation too and it's not and it's not very expensive to be able to do that right so i just want to show you guys that i'll cut this off on the replay but that's where it's at, right, boom, right there. That little join button. All right. So hopefully that explains that part. All right, let's keep going. I got a few more videos I want to show you guys. And if you guys would, do me a favor and click that thumbs up. It'll share the stream and let everybody know that we're live. We currently have 87 thumbs up. If we can get a few more thumbs up, that would help me out. Let's keep going. So this is different from Patreon, yes. This is different from Patreon. This is directly through YouTube. YouTube is giving us some extra things that we can use only for certain channels. Not every channel, even some of the bigger channels out there, your, your 100,000, 200,000, even some million of, um, what you call it, subscriber channels don't even have the option to be able to have you join their channel like that. So it's exclusive to a certain collective of YouTubers, which is actually pretty dope. Like, I don't know if, if some channels have to follow certain guidelines or whatever the case is, but nonetheless, it's just something you can check out. Let's let's go ahead and move on from that. Let's keep going. Hi, fellow crocheters. Today in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make these adorable baby shoes. And matter of fact, Rock TNT TV and Kitten Paws, you notice that they have a nice little emoji badge next, next to their name now. That's also another cool thing that happens. So it lets you know that they are AFC in YouTube. That's pretty dope also. I found a crochet hook and a bag of crafts that our aunt gave us. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I just noticed that he just utilized some of the emojis that we have in there. There are some special emojis that you can only use if you join our channel membership. And he just used two of them right there. That's pretty dope. I forgot about that. He was really fascinated with that shiny hook. We went together on YouTube to find a video just so he knew what it was used for. I really didn't think he was going to crochet a disc clock that day. A grandfather clock gives beat to many a grandmother's craft. We had turned 11 on January 5th, Saturday. Jonah Larson has two grandmothers. Yep. They just don't crochet five hours a day. Mm -hmm. Jennifer Larson 
is Jonah's mom. I've been doing it for half my life. Sometimes he gets up early. That sounds strange for a kid that young to say, doing it for half my life. <laughs> but it's cool, though. It really is. It's really cool. And Father Clock gives beat to many a grandmother's craft. We had turned 11 on January 5th, Saturday. Jonah Larson has two grandmothers. Yep. They just don't crochet. Five hours a day. Mm -hmm. Jennifer Larson is Jonah's mom. Been doing it for half my life. Sometimes he gets up early before I even get up and he's at the table crocheting at like six in the morning. Morning and night. I'm, I'm going to sleep now, mom, but underneath that cover there's his crochet hooks and a, a, a flashlight. A light first lit. <laughs> When Jonah discovered in a bag of discarded craft items his aunt's crochet hook, which led him to YouTube. Found a basic stitch video, and from there on I was hooked. Hooked? Seriously? He made a dishcloth for his first project, and he made it perfectly. That's the first hat Jonah made. He was five. Here's a personal favorite. It's my sunset afghan with a border I made. He's a crochet prodigy. It's a Scandinavian throw. I think you were about eight when you made that one. Jonah's mom posted the first of several of his projects on Instagram. It was a, a afghan he made of 800 flowers. He was probably seven at the time. 800 individual flowers and tied those together. That is... That takes dedication, it takes time and patience. That's so cool. But I want you guys to also pay attention to this. And again, if you guys would click that thumbs up going forward, he's actually going to, um, what was I getting ready to say? I'll, I'll, I'll remember here in a minute. I'll tell you here in a minute. Let's keep going. Yeah. Oh, what he wants to become. That's what I was gonna say. He's gonna tell you in a little bit what he wants to become. Had that group that was absolutely fascinated, then you had the doubters. What? You gotta be kidding me. There's no way that kid did that. Thank you, Bolo. Bolo said, hey, brother, well, you will always have my support, bro. Brother, I got your uh, your Cash App. Thank you very much. And that's an easy way for me to see the message right there because Cash App will automatically show me right there on the screen. Boom, and I seen it. So, Bolo, if you're listening, bro, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Hi, fellow crocheters. Today in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make these adorable baby shoes. Today, Jonah has thousands of social media followers. His own catchphrase. Goodbye and crochet away. And a cowl neck trend he started by crocheting one for his mom. Thousands of people started making it and they just referred to it as the Jonah cowl. That's really cool right there. Let me also shout out to Pamela Frierson who just joined us in our member section. Thank you very much. And let me also give you your moderator status. If you join, I will absolutely make sure and get you moderator status if you don't already have it, but it's gonna also give you additional benefits. So thank you to Pamela Frierson for joining. Welcome to the AFC. Jonah also gets fan mail. Maybe in Minnesota. Mail and gifts from around the world. Dear Jonah, you are an inspiration to so many people. These are some nice colors. One day I came home and there was five boxes about this size on our porch. I do have a picture of that once we um, dumped all that yarn out, Jonah's sitting in the middle of it. But the kid who may as well have a thousand out-of-town grandmas started his life alone. Yeah. That's Jonah at the orphanage in Ethiopia. At he was in Ethiopia. This young man has come a long way. Ethiopia. Think about that colors. One day I came home and there was five boxes about this size on our porch. I do have a picture of that once we um, dumped all that yarn out, Jonah's sitting in the middle of it. But the kid who may as well have a thousand out-of-town grandmas started his life alone. Yeah. That's Jonah at the orphanage in Ethiopia after he was abandoned as a newborn by his mother. There was a really high possibility he would have some cognitive delay. He was very sick. He was malnourished. Yeah. Lucked out. Jonah, adopted by the Larsons at five months. A uh, baby Afghan. Now has in his grasp his own slice of the American dream. My family, my two dogs, and crocheting. Jonah's favorite time? Crocheting with his mom 
close by. Mm -hmm. Keeping tabs on the hundreds of orders for his work, a yarn company sponsorship offer. Text him real quick. And an upcoming national talk show appearance. We would fly you and Jonah in on the 30th. Oh. I was just saying that earlier, Steve. Steve said, I bet his actual mom wants him back. I can guarantee you that. But it's so funny how, you know, when these kids are abandoned and then they become something and then you want to try to get them back, we should never just use kids for the benefits that we can collect from them. What is that called? Hashtag babies for benefits, right? That should just be a part of just being a good parent. You should reap what you sow. How many of you people agree with that? You should reap what you sow. And if you sow good seeds, you should get back a good harvest. I tell my daughter every day, actually, somebody had commented in my community section and I told them and I told them, I said, I tell my daughter every day, every day that I talk to my daughter, I'm like, it is an honor to be your father. And you know what she tells me in return? My daughter says, shout out to Crystal Chan. She says, it's an honor to be your daughter. Respect reciprocates. Shout out to my daughter, man. Let's keep going. While mastering advanced ninth grade algebra in the sixth grade with bigger plans ahead. I'm planning on attending West Point to the academy and then becoming a surgeon. A surgeon. This is kind of helping me prep for that. Dr. Jonah Larson's patients will be in good hands. Well, when you only have a short time, you gotta make the most of it. That's true. Boyd Hooper, Carol Evan wow. News, La Crosse, Wisconsin. That's a bright young man and he has a bright future. He says he wants to become a surgeon. I think he'd be a great surgeon. And that was that was biblical. <laughs> that's, that's straight up. Thank you, Bolo, I appreciate that. Thank you, Princess X. I believe she's a great daughter as well. So just wanna keep, y'all just keep praying, you know, cause you know, Raising kids is a hard thing, like I say, man, but I think she has a bright future ahead of her and her daddy is going to keep pumping her in the right direction, keep motivating her, keep inspiring her and give, giving her everything that she needs. Let's keep going, guys. Let's keep going. Hopefully you guys like the positivity that we're giving today. I hope that doesn't get me flagged. Hello, crochet friends. It's me. Jonah and I just finished crocheting the My Little Mermaid Sleep and Snuggle Sack, which is a pat pattern from yarnspirations.com. And it is just this beautiful mermaid tail. And another thing I love about it is the tail. Y'all see what he made by hand? Y'all see this? Crazy. Because it's so realistic because you have these ribs running through it and they kind of bunch up at the top and there's kind of like little spiny ridges and that's from working in the third loop of the half double crochet and that's how it gets that nice effect and the main stitch in the body here is just half double crochet which is the wrap over insert pull up pull through three very simple but you reach yes yeah, very simple sir <laughs> Once you go down 24 inches, you begin to decrease like you do a decrease 8, and then you do 5 more rows, so it slowly tapers in, and it's not so abrupt. And another thing I added, this is not part of the pattern, but it's, I just think of it as for signature, part of the mermaid tail. I always add this ruffle in a color that is in our variegated here, and I think it adds a really cool touch. But the yarn is actually the Bernat Blanket Brights, and there's variegated and solids. But the thing is, the yarn is like they have a variegated, and then they have a solid that matches it, and they're made like sets for these types of projects. And also, I wanted to tell you guys, there are many more um, sleep and snuggle sacks for all the kids out there. There's like ice creams, hot dogs, sharks, all sorts of things for you guys to check out. But the hook we used... Uh, crochet... Uh, well, I got it in the title. It's uh, C-R-O-C-H-E-T. I think that's how you spelled it. Yeah, you got it right, uh, Skohar. Yep, that's correct. I, I, I ain't gonna lie to you. I wouldn't have been able to spell crochet without Google searching it. I'll be honest with you. Today was a 10 millimeter, and then the yarn 
and the name of the yarn here was Busy Blue. So this is a really great project to make as a gift, and so you can give them people because they're so nice for for cold winter nights and for actually chilly summer nights. And also, if you have a stuffed animal or a doll, you can make a matching mermaid tail for your doll. So then, whoever you gift it to, they have it's like a matching set, and that and that's what I started to do. And then everybody loved it. So I suggest you guys check out the My Little Mermaid Sleep and Snuggle Sack on Yarnspirations.com. And thank you so much for watching today's video. And once again, let's thank your inspirations for sponsoring today's video. And goodbye and crochet away, friends. Goodbye and crochet away. That's his that's his sign off right there. That's pretty cool. I can't even lie about that. That's pretty cool. We got a few more videos, guys. I hope you guys appreciate the positivity coming through. Let's keep going. My name is Jonah Larson, and I'm eleven years old. And I'm a crochet prodigy. I am a fast crocheter. This hat, it took me 54 minutes. I I, I mean, let me back that up. I'm going to show y'all something. I would love to have a hat like that. Love to have a hat like that. So imagine like if you just already had a kid at home that could just throw that together. Crystal Chan, if you want, you know, you want to pick up some knitting. Your daddy might not mind buying you some, some, some hooks and some yarn and all of that good stuff. But yeah, I would love to have a hat like that. It looks comfortable too. Minutes. I see something in my head before I make it. My flower afghan. I started off with a basic flower pattern. I had to make 800 individual flowers. I marched to the beat of my own drums. Crocheting helps my future. I plan to be a surgeon. It helps me with hand dexterity and my money. I saved for my retirement. The crochet community is just so kind. They're always even encouraging comments, even if they don't like it. Here you go. My older teenage brother isn't quite so sure about it, but it's just what I do. I am a full blown 100% crocheter, but I do respect those knitters. Okay, so I'm gonna address what, uh, who was that that said that earlier? I think that was um, Ladyfoots, if I'm not mistaken. So apparently there is a difference between knitting and crocheting. So there you go. He just answered it. There is a difference between knitting and crocheting. I am a full blown 100% crocheter, but I do respect those knitters. All right, let's keep going. I got a few more to show you guys. Let's keep going. A young man in lacrosse is breaking down barriers with an amazing... Yes, Linda, you did hear that right. He's already talking retirement. How about that? Where do you guys think that he learned that value from? At 11. How many 11-year-olds do you guys know that are already actively pushing towards their retirement? Smart stuff. Real smart. A young man in lacrosse is breaking down barriers with an amazing gift. Yeah, his skills in the popular yarn craft crochet have inspired people of all ages from all over the world now to follow their passion. And get this, he's only 11 years old. He's using all of the attention to make a difference in a country that has a special place in his heart. News 8's Jordan Fremstead has the story. Every story begins with an opening line. Hi, crochet friends. It's Jonah and Jonah I Larson's story here. began six years ago. Yeah. Our aunt gave us a bag of crafts for us kids to look through. And I found a object that looked like this. A crochet hook. Right now I'm, I'm, I'm actually making a hat. That spun a series of events this lacrosse family didn't expect. It's just been a really fun adventure for the whole family. With only a few YouTube tutorials, Jonah wove what many would call a hobby into a business. That first crochet hook has led me very far. So far, 
all the way from the Lacrosse Tribune's first introduction to his now more than 20,000 YouTube followers, 122,000 Instagram followers, and appearances on national talk shows like Pickler and Ben. After a while, I sort of just got used to all the interviews and all that. An article in Forbes magazine, a feature on CBS News, a book deal, and if that wasn't enough, a contract with Yarnspirations. He's going to be in Oprah magazine, uh, Women's World. I can't even remember them all. All stemming from his first project he made at age five. I made my first dishcloth, which we still have today, and we use it in the kitchen. Now he can make. Really anything imaginable. When Jonah wants to do something, Jonah does it. He figures it out. Sure, the attention is great, but the climax of this story is inside Jonah's heart. If you just think, what could you be doing as a way to thank the people who brought you? He has a GoFundMe page collaborating with the nonprofit Roots Ethiopia <coughs> to help mothers learn trade skills so they can support their families in the same village he was born. Let me point something else out about this that's really unique. Very unique. Here's where we're going to start to get into the meat of this. Think about this. He was an orphan in Ethiopia. American, an American family adopted him. Allowed him to find his gift in life. Helped him harness his gift, nourished his gift. And he is now making a, a lifelong, he's, he's going to, I mean, like he's going to benefit from this for the rest of his life. And he's working to return some of his gift back to where he's from. Does that not sound familiar guys? I'm not going to be negative. I'm not going to be negative over here today. We're going to be positive. I want you guys to think about how deep that is. Besides giving him life, the country and the family that he's from didn't give him anything. He was saved from his own demise from his own parents by a group of people who adopted him. Brought him in, loved him, nurtured him, and cared for him. Thank you, Chorus. Hone his gift, help him develop his gift, and he's going to spend his life working in order to make where he's originally from better. Boy, if that's boy, man, if that's not deep, I don't know what is. That's deep. We could, we could talk about a lot of different things, but let's keep going. Again, if you guys are watching, click that thumbs up, guys. Click that thumbs up. Thank you, guys. They help keep families together. They help kids to go to school. And they help with orphan care. Jonah was an orphan himself and was abandoned by his birth mother. Obviously, things worked out for the better, but Jonah is spreading his good. Y'all hear that? He was abandoned by his mother himself and was abandoned by his birth mother. Obviously things worked out for the better, but Jonah is spreading his good fortune to those still looking for theirs. And this is the way I could help. His skills have gravitated to people around the world. And I've heard it from so many people that this is just a time in the world right now where they needed a bit of joy and happiness and they found it through Jonah's crochet. The evidence is left at their front porch every day in the form of gifts and postcards with no end in sight. His advice to people is to tell their story the way they want. Just do what you love. And like all great stories, they have to have a closing line. Goodbye and crochet away, friends. But Jonah will tell you his story is only the beginning. In La Man. We could talk. We'll, 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 we'll have to bring this up at another time. Let's keep going. We got couple more videos, okay? couple more videos. Click If y'all are enjoying this positivity, click that like button, okay? Jonah Larson has gotten national attention for his hobby and his ability to do things at lightning fast speed. Yeah, the lacrosse adoptee is a crocheting machine, but it's what he wants to do with that in the future. And you say he's a very special child. I'll say this. This is, this is how I'll agree with you. I agree with you say he is a special child, but all children are special. All children have a gift, and I think as parents, 
it is our responsibility to make sure and try to give our kids every opportunity to try to find what their gift is in life. That's what I said to that. Dumpy is a crocheting machine, but it's what he wants to do with that in the future that caught the attention of some of the most nimble doctors at UW Hospital. That's where Danica Lewis met up with Jonah today. So you yeah. put your hands like this. Yeah. It's safe to say Jonah Larson is more adult than some adults. How long does it normally take to like master this? So when you ask the 11 year old about his future. Well, when I grew up, I wanted to be a surgeon. Yeah. yeah. He is very sure of his answer. Yeah, that's what I'm going to be. It's tough, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it helps both his parents have medical backgrounds. Did I go through too much here? But it's what he does with his free time that has him thinking he'll have a knack for this. Oh, you put and then out yes. again. But it's a lot simpler when doing it in crochet. To test out his career plans, the crochet prodigy is training alongside actual surgeons at UW Hospital. I put it through here to tie it up, though. These tools may not be hooks and yarn, but simulating sutures, sewing up pretend wounds, it feels somewhat familiar. Crochet helps with like my hand dexterity. That's another reason I want to be a surgeon. When he said he wanted to be a surgeon, I thought we need to invite him to our Department of Surgery. Did mine become too short all of a sudden? As he's been saying, this is really his priority, is to be a surgeon someday. So what better way than to try it out with us? Could you hold that? Yep. He's incredible. It's a way that to help people, and it seems like it's kind of fun now. Yeah, I see like a long blue vein. Jonah has also decided he wants to go back to his home country of Ethiopia and treat people there. Well, probably not. Easy, but cool. In fact, he's already selling some of his crochet work to help. This is what my future is going to be, so I feel like this is an important thing for me to do. Yeah, it, it is tough, but it's also fun. But even the most mature of 11-year-olds... It's been a wonderful experience. ...are still kids. And I got a free day of no school. <laughs> Danica Lewis, News 3 Now. I think you probably afford to miss a day. Uh -huh. Along with testing out his dexterity, Jonah also got to check out MedFlight and actually teach some of the doctors how to crochet. Thanks. Again, guys, I want you guys to remember that he's so smart in school that they allowed him to skip an entire grade. That's Jonah. Let me show you guys this last video and then we'll go ahead and wrap up. And I got more to bring you guys, okay? Crochet friends, it's me, Jonah, and to start off today's video, I wanted to thank you all for contributing to my GoFundMe page. We're at $4,750, and I would love if tonight we could reach our bid point of $5,000, and then later get all the way up to that $10,000. And I wanted to thank all of you for my favorite part of everything that you guys do is just the work kind and encouraging words and they mean a lot to me. Oh, and if you want to see a couple more YouTube videos I put, they're not tutorials yet, but there's a couple more from packages, and here's a little hint. I am the long gray line. That's all you guys get to know, so make sure to check out that YouTube video if you want to know where all this stuff came from. Goodbye and crochet away, friends. Crochet. I don't know what to say, man. Cool video, cool kid. But like I said, man, I think all kids are special. That's what we do here in the AFC. We advocate for the children first. This is a an example that if you just take the time to find what each and every kid's gift is, each and every kid can produce something very, very special to give back to the world. And I'd like to shout out uh, Chris and Jennifer again, who are the uh, the mother and father the legal mother and father of him, not the biological mother and father. The biological mother and father abandoned him in Ethiopia. He was hanging on to dear life and thank goodness that Chris and Jennifer came in and saved his life. Not only saved his life, but um, allowed him to have the safety to have the nurturing and for him to find his gift and for him to turn that into something that that is just out just absolutely amazing it's really really cool and um and again shout out to the family but you know that's that stands as a uh, message for us as parents as people of the community and uh united states citizens of america you know what i'm saying that's why i think that all kids are important you know i, I believe that 
We need to be a lot more careful when it comes to procreating, when it comes to bringing these kids into this world. One of the things that Jonah talked about was he wants to to help make mothers and fathers in his hometown uh, where he's originally from, like like get them to work together and stay together. And I don't blame him because that's where he's from and he wants to fix those situations so another kid from where he's from and has his background and history doesn't go through what he went through. He was very, very fortunate to still be alive. Now, as far as us being Americans and us being from here, I think our first priority and responsibility is to take care of home first, right? We take care of home first. We take care of our, our kids first. To our ladies, make sure to take care of your bodies. To our fellas, make sure you take care of your seed. Very, very important. I like that. I'm going to have to say that again. To my ladies, make sure you take care of your body. To my fellas, make sure you take care of your seed. We both have to be a lot more responsible when it comes to bringing kids into this world. And we definitely need to give them respect first. Keep our hands, feet, and objects off of kids and just continue to love them. If you guys need parenting tips, you know you can always email me at thesotopodcast at gmail.com. We'd we'll love to talk to you guys. Again, I want to say thank you guys. That's the end of the stream. Shout out to Jonah. You can look him up at Jonah's Hands. Let me go ahead and get his um, GoFundMe page up. If you guys wanted to see that, I'll let you guys take a screenshot here real quick and let you know where his progress is. He has a $25,000 goal. It doesn't look like he's going to have a problem reaching that goal. Cause in that video you saw, he was talking about a $10,000 goal is up to $25,000 now. And so it looks like he's got a lot of support there. Really, really dope. If nothing else, I would encourage you guys to at least follow him on social media. It is Jonah's hands, J O N A H apostrophe S hands h-a-n-d-s and you can find him on instagram so follow him on instagram and you can just tell him that the afc the advocates for children is where you heard this first okay this is your boy dj just jam signing out man thank you guys so much that's the end of the stream peace